Street. Coming up on Breed All About It, a dog that might have been bred by Rip Van Wrinkle. In this wrinkly pile of dog, just massive wrinkles. An ancient Chinese fighting dog. They were bred to guard, they have very strong guarding instinct. That almost became extinct in the 1970s. The majority of them were just gone from the face of the earth. How you doing? While it suffers from many health problems. Good job, Katie. Oh, this is my cute kids. The breed is back, looking happy and healthy. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. Behind the wrinkles is the unmistakable Chinese Sha Pei. You have to look between the folds and behind the furrows to find the history belonging to the ancient dog of China. Come on, let's go. Their crinkled cheeks, rumpled eyebrows and broad nose date back 2,000 years. The Sha Pei's eccentric appearance came in part from the Tibetan Mastiff and the Chow Chow. Compare the eyes. They could be cousins. Another hidden Chow Chow feature is the tongue. The Sha Pei's mouth is pink as a puppy, but as it grows, the tongue turns bluish black, just like a chow. As for the wrinkles, the Chinese encouraged them through selective breeding. The thick folds help to protect the dog. The original Sha Pei guarded farms from wild animals and predators, and also served as warriors in the dog pen. This breed's strong muscular build made it a great protector and defender. Despite its loyalty and looks, the Sha Pei lost favour in their homeland and almost became extinct after World War II. Decades later, American breeders resurrected the breed. Dee Dee Wells' Sha Pei have enough roles to make the Pillsbury Doughboy jealous. Puppy, 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 puppies. These little dumplings are helping to bring good fortune to their breed. Oh, this is my cute kids! Dee Dee's goal is to create a line of Sha Pei that helps to eliminate the breed's health problems. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. She's really very, very lovely. Healthy or not, there's one thing you should know before rubbing shoulders with this canine's coat. Sha Pei means sand coat. Sand is in the texture, not the color, because Sha Pei come in many colors. You can break out in a rash from this coat. Uh, they have an oil in their coats that causes this rash. Dee Dee's family got their first Sha Pei in the early 1970s. The breed's numbers suffered greatly during the 50s when the communists took over China. Due to famine, the People's Republic banned the breeding of all dogs and taxed people who owned them. Few dogs survived these years. With everybody losing their dogs or killing their dogs or eating their dogs, the majority of them were just gone uh, completely from the face of the earth. Their comeback came at the hands of this man, Matgo Law, a breeder in Hong Kong. This was a, an important piece of their their origin and their history and so he really was interested in seeing if he could try to bring the breed back into being. Law pleaded his case in a 1973 article in Dogs magazine. He asked Americans for their help. Mr Law wrote, Who knows, if we can ship some of our dogs to your country, they may someday become as popular as the Pekingese or Chow Chow. We can only hope. He didn't want to lose this history of China. Dee Dee's mother, Margaret Patterson, responded to the plea. As an international American Kennel Club judge, she encouraged her peers to come to the rescue. They were very interested in seeing this wrinkly pile of dog that they'd never seen before. All they'd seen is this picture of just massive wrinkles. Margaret adopted several Sha Pei from law, but Dee Dee fostered a deeper bond. I had a female, and her name was La Pu. But I became so in love with the breed that I'm the one who took over and started raising and showing and breeding the Sharpay. 
But Dee Dee noticed an alarming trend in the breed. People were just breeding and selling dogs at $1,000, $2,000 a piece because they were rare, and the more puppies they could have, the more they could sell, the better off they were. Sharpe became immediate status symbols. The store, Nyman Marcus, sold the pups in its 1983 Christmas catalog. We went from zero Sharpe to like 75,000 Sharpe in hardly any time at all like 20 years or less. Over the years, the breed's numbers have subtracted and multiplied, but they've always had Dee Dee's undivided attention. They just give you so much just day-to-day -day companionship. They're just a great addition to the family. Uh, it's difficult to think that I would ever, ever be without a Sharpe at this point. The Kyle Blog family feels the same way. Dee Dee, you know I'm going to have to have another one, don't you? <laughs> Trula and Jim just drove four hours to pick up a pup for Trula's sister, Barb Wood. Barb's an experienced Sharpe owner, whose own Sharpe, Bear, recently passed away. Yeah, all she has talked about is, I want another dog. I need another dog. I miss Bear. The puppy holds a secret. Bear is her uncle. Yeah. Bear was her uncle. And will be a surprise for Barb. She knows absolutely nothing, and I've got a big red bow. We're going to put a big red bow around her little neck for the kids to give to her. It's a package sure to bring tears of joy. She's going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> and tears of sadness to another. You be a good girl, and you write. After securing the breed's past... I will have them email you, if it's all right if I give them your email. Sure. Dee Dee sees another Sharpe embark on the road to her future. You guys be good. Oh, I'm terribly emotional. Well, there's always a little bit of me that uh, kind of goes with the puppy. While one Sharpe starts a new life on the road to 